When one door closes, another opens, but we often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one which has opened for us. Concentrate all your thoughts upon the work at hand. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. Before anything else, preparation is the key to success. Sometimes we stare so long at a door that is closing that we see too late the one that is open. America is a country of inventors, and the greatest of inventors are the newspaper men. Great discoveries and improvements invariably involve the cooperation of many minds. I may be given credit for having blazed the trail, but when I look at the subsequent developments I feel the credit is due to others rather than to myself. What this power is I cannot say. All I know is that it exists and it becomes available only when a man is in that state of mind in which he knows exactly what he wants and is fully determined not to quit until he finds it. A man, as a general rule, owes very little to what he is born with a man is what he makes of himself. Educate the masses, elevate their standard of intelligence, and you will certainly have a successful nation. A man's own judgment should be the final appeal in all that relates to himself. The most successful men in the end are those whose success is the result of steady accretion. Dumbness comes from the fact that a child is born deaf and that it consequently never learns how to articulate, for it is by the medium of hearing that such instruction is acquired. It is not, of course, complete yet but some sentences were understood this afternoon. I feel that I have at last struck the solution of a great problem, and the day is coming when telegraph wires will be laid onto houses just like water or gas and friends converse with each other without leaving home. I would impress upon your minds the fact that if you want to do a man justice, you should believe what a man says himself rather than what people say he says. My knowledge of electrical subjects was not acquired in a methodical manner but was picked up from such books as I could get hold of and from such experiments as I could make with my own hands. It is a neck and neck race between Mr. Gray and myself who shall complete our apparatus first. He has the advantage over me in being a practical electrician but I have reason to believe that I am better acquainted with the phenomena of sound than he is so that I have an advantage there. Morse conquered his electrical difficulties although he was only a painter, and I don't intend to give in either till all is completed. From my earliest childhood, my attention was specially directed to the subject of acoustics, and specially to the subject of speech, and I was urged by my father to study everything relating to these subjects, as they would have an important bearing upon what was to be my professional work. In this experiment, made on the 9th of October, 1876, actual conversation, backwards and forwards, upon the same line, and by the same instruments reciprocally used, was successfully carried on for the first time upon a real line of miles in length. The nation that secures control of the air will ultimately control the world. I have discovered that my interest in my dear pupil, Mabel, has ripened into a far deeper feeling than that of mere friendship. In fact, I know that I have learned to love her very sincerely. Neither the army nor the navy is of any protection, or very little protection, against aerial raids. It is hardly an exaggeration to say that oral teachers and sign teachers found it difficult to sit down in the same room without quarreling, and there was intolerance upon both sides. To say, oral method, to a sign teacher was like waving a red flag in the face of a bull, and to say, sign language, to an oralist aroused the deepest resentment. Such a chimerical idea as telegraphing vocal sounds would indeed, to most minds, seem scarcely feasible enough to spend time in working over. I believe, however, that it is feasible and that I have got the cue to the solution of the problem. I do not recognize the right of the public to break in the front door of a man's private life in order to satisfy the gaze of the curious. I do not think it right to dissect living men even for the advancement of science. So far as I am concerned, I prefer a post-mortem examination to vivisection without anesthetics.